question 7 then from the 2022 higher maths paper 2 5 mark question it's that log graph one the one about the experimental data because what it says is you suspect although it doesn't say that there you've got a connection between the variables that involves a power of a variable now if you were just to plot the raw data then you would get some sort of curve because but that curve would look the same if it was squared or cubed or power four or even some fractional power so what you do instead is you plot the logarithms of the value because in plotting the logarithms if that ends up as a straight line that straight line will give you the values you need so what does it say so you've plotted them you've plotted the logs instead of the original values so those aren't the original values of x and y those are the values of the logarithm base 5 of y and the logarithm base 5 of x if that's the case from that graph find these two values what is the power and what was the multiplying constant now there's two ways this could be done although each of those two ways splits into even more ways one way is to realize you've got a straight line so from that straight line you can get the gradient and you can get the point of intersection with the y-axis in other words you can get the equation of the line and then you could work back to that or you could start from this and apply logarithms to end up with the equation of a line and then identify the gradient and where it cuts the axis or you could take those numbers which were changed into logs and take them back to the original numbers and put them into this and just have two equations which are simultaneous equations and we'll do the, the graph way first because there's the graph because you can see it's a straight line so what have we got well there's two ways you can either start with this and go to a line or start with a line and go to this I think I'll start with this and go to the line there's all sorts of different ways so if you start with that equation y equals k x to the n and you take log base 5 of both sides so this will split up there's a product so I'll split into two parts I think I'll write that other one first though so that would be log base 5 of x to the n and log base 5 of k now that can split again you've got the rules here of logs if you've got a power that can pop out to the front so that's n log 5 of x plus log 5 of k oh now if you're doing it this way the first mark would be introducing the logs next mark would come when you expand it all out now this part here now looks like the equation of a line this is it looks like y equals mx plus c so you can compare the parts with the line now the gradient of that line since you've got these two points you've got 0 3 and you've got 2 negative 1 the gradient of that line would be difference in the y's over difference in the x's that's negative 4 over 2 is negative 2. The constant. Well, you could either read that straight off because you know where it cuts the y-axis. So you know the constant's 3. So that's probably what I would do first, just say the constant equals 3. Or you could put one of those numbers into it. Well, put that one in because that's the obvious one. So putting that one into it, you've got 3 equals 0 plus c. So that c equals 3, but you could have gone straight in with c equals 3. And now you can compare those parts with those parts. Well, the m was the n. So m equals negative 2 means that n equals negative 2. Now the c equals 3 means that log base 5 of k equals 3 because the c corresponds to this term. So that k must be inverse, which is 5 to the power 3, so that k is 1, 2, 5. Now obviously there was one mark for the n because that just fell straight out of it, but there was two for getting the k part because first of all you had to identify it with the log and then you had to solve that little equation. Now it didn't ask you to put that back together again, it just said what's the value of n and k, so that's it done. You could finish off if you wanted so that means it was actually 125 x to the power negative 2 but there was no marks for doing that so that was one way then starting with this and expanding that to make it look like a line and then comparing it bit by bit with the line you've actually got 
Now the other way is to do that in reverse. The other way around, just by looking at that, you say that's the equation of a line. It looks like this. It looks like y equals mx plus c. Only that y isn't a y, it's a log 5 of y. And that x isn't an x, it's a log 5 of x plus c. And then just find those two as normal. So I've already done that, but I'll just do it again. So that gradient would be the difference in the y coordinates over the difference in the x coordinates. So that gradient would be negative 2. The intercept you know is 3, so now you can go in with log 5 of y is negative 2 log 5 of x plus 3. That's just writing out the equation of that line as if they just said x and y. Now that only gets one mark. But now what you've got to do then is just tidy that all up. Now here's where there's this splits into two methods. How do you deal with this log? To tidy this up, in other words, you need to get rid of these logs. So it's the same as that previous question. How would you get rid of these logs? Well, you could combine them over here into a single log and then use the exponential. Or you could change that into a log and combine them together to make a log and then equate the parts. So it's split, this part splits into two ways then. So one way would be bring that over here. So log 5 of y plus 2 log 5 of x would equal 3. To get them to join, I need that 2 out of the way. So you've got these bare logs to add together. Log 5 of y plus log 5 of x squared equals 3. Now you can add them. Log 5 of y x squared equals 3. And then finally get rid of that log y times x squared is 5 to the power 3. And then finally, y equals, bring that across and divide, so that goes to 125. Then you can either write over x squared, or if you want it in that form, make that x to the negative 2. Now the three marks in the middle here were just for using the various laws of logs. So popping the power inside was worth a mark using the fact that if you've got a product, it splits into the sum, was worth a mark. And getting rid of the log by using the exponential was worth a mark. And the final marks for identifying the two parts. So you just compare that with the original. So that means that the k must be the 125, and the n must be the negative 2. Never should have said here, compared with y equals k x to the n means that the k is the 1, 2, 5 and the n is the negative 2. Now the other route would have been to change that 3 to match this so everything was in logs. So log base 5 of y would still be negative 2 log base 5 of x but changing that into a log base 5 as well would be that would have to give a result of power 3 so that must be 5 to the power 3 that says what power of 5 is this thing and the answer is to be 3 so it must be the third power of 5 doing that gets a mark and then as before it's using the, the laws of logs so popping that inside was worth a mark so log base 5 of x to the negative 2 plus log base 5 of 5 to the 3. Add them together. Log base 5 of, put it the other way around, 5 to the 3, I should have changed that into 1, 2, 5, times x to the negative 2. Which worth a mark? No mark for this next bit though. And then just saying this, well if the log of that equals the log of that, those two things must be the same to give the same answer. So y equals 1, 2, 5, x to the negative 2. And then compare it with the original to extract them. Now the other method, which doesn't involve the fact that you've got a straight line and so you identify the features of the line, is just to go back to the original data. The point zero three. What were the original values of x and y? And then I could pop it into this. 
Well, remember, those were logarithms. So the x, so log base 5 of x was 0. Well, that means that that original x was 5 to the power 0, which is just 1. And the 3, that log base 5 of y was 3. So that means that that y was 5 to the power 3, which you could leave like that, could be handy, but I'm just going to multiply it out, out which is 125. Now, doing it this way, there's two marks already. One, for knowing how to get back to the original values, because these were actually the logarithms. And one for getting those two values. So that was one point. You'll be doing the same thing with the other point, with two negative one. So you only got one mark this time, because you're doing the same thing again. You'll just be saying that log 5 of x was 2, which means x will be 5 to the power 2. Notice you could leave them all as powers of 5. I'll just think I'll just take it to 25. And log base 5 of y was negative 1, which means y is going to be 5 to the power of negative 1. Might have been better just leaving it as powers of 5, because that's now 1 over 5. So that gets a mark. Now you've put them back into the original form, you can create two equations now that will involve k and n. So taking the first point, which was 1, 1, 2, 5, back to the original points, and feeding it into that, you've got this. 125 is k times 1 to the power n. Well, that's quite handy, because 1 to the power n thing's 1. So straight away from that, you've got k equals 1, 2, 5. Now that you've got that, you can go to the second point, which was... 25 uh, one fifth and feed that in now knowing that the k is 1 2 5 so there's only one thing left so that says when y is a fifth and k is 1 2 5 and x is 25 you've got power n now th this is the point where it might have been easier just to keep the powers there but it's not going to be that bad I'm just going to rewrite this so that means that you've got 25 to some power, should be, take that across and divide, should be 1 over 625. I don't know why I wrote that power there. Now, there's three ways you could go from here. I keep splitting into different ways, each of these. You could either just recognise that, you could do that by inspection, because that's that squared. So by inspection, you could just say n is negative 2, because that's power 2 underneath. That would do. Or, you could use logarithms to solve that equation. You could say, well, if 25 to the power n is this, then the opposite of the exponential, n would be log base 25 of 1 over 625, if you wanted to. It's easy to just do it by inspection. You've got this button here, log with a wee blank. See that, log. So if you put a 25 in there, and then go over to here, and I'll put in a fraction, 1 over 625, and then press equals, negative 2. You still get negative 2. Or a third way would have been if you just kept them all as powers of 5, but I think that's quite clear. that You, you should know 25 squared is 625. A third way would be just to have them, I suppose you could have kept them all in the original form, all the powers, I've not really got room over here, where, where can I put it? So that's that says, oh, it's a bit messy. That says you've got 5 to the power negative 1, you've got 5 to the power 3 times, that's 5 to the power 2 to the power n, so that's 5 to the power 2n. And then you could say, well, 5 to the power 2n equals, take that across and divide, divide by power will be subtract, is 5 to the negative 4. So that means that that 2n must be negative 4, so n must be negative 2. So there are three ways you could get that negative 2. I'm just going for this one. There it is.